Hello, Computer Science 20, and welcome to your Quint 2 Computer Science course. My name is Brennan Dunbar, and I'm going to be working with you this Quint, and I'm looking forward to it. It's a class I've taught many times before. I enjoy teaching it, and uh, the students, by and large, seem to enjoy it as well, so I hope you feel the same way when we're done. So this is just a quick introduction video uh, to let you know a little bit about the class and uh, how you're going to get logged in and how we're going to get going, how to hand sign assignments in, etc. So uh, I made myself a little document and we're just going to follow along and I'll try to cover all the, you know, the big sort of big picture issues um, that uh, we need to discuss. And then you can expect some follow up emails from me in the near future to give you access to everything and make sure we're all set up and ready to go. All right. Well, I already said welcome to the course, so I'll pass that one by. And uh, Quint 2 is going to start on October 30th. So that's a uh, Friday, I believe, and it's going to run all the way up until our winter break. So December 18th is going to be the last day that I can submit anything for marks or, uh, or otherwise. So it's basically from here until our Christmas break. We are going to be using a system called Blackboard, which is completely online. It's basically an online classroom. Um, those of you who have taken online courses in Quint 1, nothing really changes. You're just going to be added to a new class. So hopefully uh, several of you have done online learning before and then won't have any trouble logging in and getting going. But uh, also there's probably some people who are new to online learning and that's okay too. We've got some resources set up to help you log in and make sure you've got all the accounts right, make sure you're in the right class and that you have access to everything that you're going to need to be successful in this course. So I'm not going to go through all that in this video. I'm going to send you some information via email that will give you some links to um, videos and tutorials on where you need to go and how you sign in and uh, where you access materials, etc. So you can expect those emails coming within the next day. There is a training module in Blackboard, so in the online classroom, that uh, we really recommend that you go through. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's well designed uh, and it takes you through all of the things that you should be seeing and the things you should be able to do on Blackboard. And that includes accessing, uh, you know, learning videos and accessing your assignments and your tests and your quiz and how to hand things in. So that stuff's all going to be very important in this course. So please um, do take an hour or so, just do all the training and make sure everything's set up for success. As you know, um, <laughs> the quints, they, they, they go by very quickly. So we really need to get working right away and we don't want you to fall behind. So if you do some of this some of this work in the beginning to familiarize yourself with the online classroom. It'll make a big difference as we move forward. So one of the uh, one of the major um, things that I found is my class calendar helps keep us organized. We only have so many days to complete all of the materials that uh, and all the concepts that we need to get through. So it's very important that we keep a consistent pace. Now, if you find that you're able to work ahead a little bit and uh, you're still doing well and you're, and, and you're getting good marks and you seem to understand the concepts. I have no problem with people working ahead, um, but we do have to maintain a minimum pace or we're not going to get through all of the things that the uh, Provincial Ministry of Education says that we have to get done in a semester. So at this point, I'm just going to flick over to, uh, I'm going to flick over to um, our uh, Blackboard learning system just to show you where that class calendar and some of these introductory materials are. So I'm in, I'm in student view right now, and this is after you've logged into Blackboard. So again, there's other videos coming to show you how to log in. But after you log into Blackboard, um, you're going to see that uh, you start out on, I think most of you will start on, on an announcements page, and there might not be a whole lot in there in the beginning. So I'm going to focus on this navigation bar on the left here, and just, just show you, you know, the key areas that you need to, uh, that you need to be able to, you know, be successful in this class. Um, first thing, when you start uh, the class, when you're logged into Blackboard for the first time, please go to the Start Here aptly named link. And when you click in there, there's going to be a copy of this video here. And there's also going to be a little Google form here that I'd like you to click into and fill up just so I can learn a little bit more about you and what you're interested in learning. And I'm sure you get these in just about every class. It's sort of a I meet you, you meet me kind of deal. So I'd like you to fill out that form, and if you need to rewatch the video for whatever reason, it'll be posted up there as well. The second thing down is the Blackboard orientation model that I referred to, and again, I it, it won't take you that long. I said an hour, it probably won't even take you that long. Just uh, just clicking here and go through the links in order 
so that you know um, what you should know about Blackboard and how to hand assignments in and get your materials and things like that. So that's definitely what you should look at next. There is a course outline that is posted both here and also there is a course outline link down here. It's the exact same thing. So you can look at it in either place and it'll give you an idea of what we're learning in this course and how you're going to be assessed and, and uh, you know, recommendations for, for you maximizing your learning and meeting your learning goals. So that's, that's worth a read as well. I also have some technology tips that I kind of add to periodically, um, which will hopefully help make you a little bit more efficient. Um, so I've made little videos on how you can quickly alt tab between screens and there's uh, split screen options. And I'll, I'll probably throw, you know, a few more tech tips in here along the way, things that I think will help you make you more efficient. And uh, efficiency means you spend less time working in, uh, at schoolwork and more time doing other things that you enjoy. So that's the start here page. Uh, home and announcements. It might, your page might look a little different than mine, but it's pretty handy in that whenever I, there's something that I post that I need you to know, it'll show up in the My Announcements section. So there's, there will regularly be new announcements in here that you should look at. Um, the to-do list is also very handy. It'll show you um, upcoming assignments, upcoming quizzes, tests, when things are due, you know, what things are overdue, if you forgot to hand it in or whatnot. Um, and it'll, it'll just be a, you know, a handy way for you to organize your uh, organize the class, right? So that's, uh, you know, that those things, you know, the announcements I check every day to start here, you only have to check basically the first time you log in. And uh, we're going to spend 90 plus percent of our time in this link called learning modules. So 90% of your time is going to be here, you're going to be clicking in there every day for sure. At the very top of learning modules, what we're going to have is we're going to have the class calendar. Okay, so I recommend that you print this calendar off and, uh, you know, just kind of tape it to the wall beside wherever you are working and use it to keep track of uh, due dates and what we should be learning on a certain day and uh, help keep yourself organized because we, we do have to stick to that calendar. Again, if you feel like you're doing well and you want to move ahead a little bit, perfectly comfortable with that. But we do have to keep a minimum pace to make sure that we to make sure that we learn everything we need to learn. There is a list underneath that, so I'll just give you a quick look at what the what the calendar looks like. This is from the from the first quint, so the days aren't going to line up, but it's just a you know it's just a PDF document that uh, shows you what lessons we're supposed to be doing each day and when the quizzes are and and uh, you know those things are highlighted in yellow. What our holidays are, um, we're going to have you know a, a Thanksgiving break in the middle of our in the middle of our quint, so things like that. And it just it just helps keep us uh, keep us organized and on track for what we need to do. So definitely, uh, if you can, print that calendar out and uh, you know refer to it every day to make sure that we're keeping pace. So those are the top two items in the learning modules. After that, it's actually split out into the things the just call them units that we're doing in the course. Um, the first module is essentially the you know the first three or four days. It's going to be an introduction to computer science and hardware versus software, planning, uh, a little bit of computer history. And then after that, we're going to shift to some specific uh, programming languages. We're going to start with something called Scratch, which some of you may have done in elementary or possibly even high school already. Uh, we move on to a different program called Reborg the Robot that gets you uh, um, sort of half working with visual objects and half working with actual typed syntax code, which will take us into Python which is the primary programming language that we're going to be using for the course. And uh, so it's a sort of a nice transition here uh, from something that's, you know, quite simple and elementary, a little bit more complex, and then to, you know, a higher level of complexity. And then we've got a couple more modules in here. One of them is computers and society. We might look at a little career stuff, things like that, and their impact of technology on society. And then a final project. So there aren't that many units per se in this class and we're going to spend the majority of our time, the vast majority of our time in modules two, three, and four. So those are the ones that I would say uh, are, are the most important. They're going to take us the most time. So all of your learning materials are in this learning module section. I'm just going to click into, uh, let's say, module three right now. It's called Reboard the Robot. And once you get inside one of these modules, there's a little table of contents and you just work through it from the top to the bottom and it links to uh, you know things we should be reading, things we should be doing, 
Um, all the assignments are linked in here. Here's a video that I made to kind of help you get you going. A lot of the learning that we're going to be doing in this class is going to be me doing tutorial videos where I will um, be taking you through assignments or helping you get set up with your programs, teaching you commands, and uh, and so forth. So, um, you know, these are, these are really, I think, well organized. You just start at the top and you work your way down and just make sure you're getting done the things that you need to get done on any given day. And you can always, you know, you can always click up here again or back here to learning modules to get back to the main page and, you know, whatever unit you need to go to. So for a module four, you'll be in here, start at the top, you know, questions and answers, textbooks, things like that. So that's a, you know, that's, that's, you know, Blackboard in a, in a, you know, 30 seconds <laughs> kind of deal. Um, <clears throat> other things we've got in here is we've got a virtual meeting space. So every once in a while, um, once a week, likely, we'll set up uh, we'll set up live virtual sessions where we'll it's almost like a Zoom like kind of environment where uh, I'll be available for questions and answers. Maybe I'll be teaching something that uh, people seem to be getting confused about, common questions that classes uh, that students in the class are asking, things from quizzes and exams that I think we need to discuss. Um, so uh, those are going to be probably once a week. I'll stagger the times uh, of these because I know some people are doing part time online. Um, so you may not be able to make it in the morning. So, you know, I might swap morning, afternoon, week by week. And some students are adult, uh, students who are working during the day. And if you can't make the session, I'll make sure that they're recorded so that you can watch them later. So that's the virtual meeting space. The migrate section is pretty straightforward. It just shows you all of the quizzes, assignments, and exams, and you know, how you do it. <laughs> when you get feedback in this class, I'll hand your assignments back in the same place that you handed them in. You can also access them from the My Grades section. And uh, feedback will be either typed in a little feedback window I've got, or I will, uh, you know, I'll write, I've got a digital tablet, so I'll write feedback right on your, right on your assignments. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can, we can make some mistakes, and we can learn from our feedback and just gradually improve how we do things as we work through the course. So that's the My Grades section. There's a Teach Contact page, you know, just shows you what I look like and got my email, it's got my phone number and, uh, you know, some other links. So uh, I'm really adamant that students contact me with any, you know, concerns, questions, whatnot. Um, I'm, I always help, you know, like I, I love helping students and uh, I can only help you if, if you let me know that you're struggling with something. So for those of you who may be a little bit, you know, less comfortable, asking for help. Um, I just, I, I gotta do my best to encourage you to, to let me know. I'm, I like to think I'm a pretty nice guy and I, I do my best to help students. So you, you don't ever need to be nervous about sending me an email and saying, I, I don't quite understand this or I need a little bit more help with this. Um, I'm always happy to help. So, so please do uh, contact me. And uh, there's a couple other links in here, but we're not really going to use them. You're not going to need to use the discussions button. Uh, the course outline, I've already showed you where to access that. If you're having some specific problem in Blackboard, something's not working right, you could click on the help, but chances are it's probably just easier to email me and I can I can help you out. So I've tried to trim down uh, our Blackboard classroom to just, just the elements that we absolutely need. And uh, it'll be pretty simple, I think, once you get uh, once you get rolling on it. It's, we spend 90% of our time in learning modules. So as long as you can find your way there and work from the top to the bottom, um, you shouldn't you shouldn't get too lost inside of Blackboard. All right, I'm going to bring up my uh, my notes again and just go through you know a couple of last couple of last ideas here. Um, there is no physical textbook for this uh, for this class. We have digital resources only, and uh, so you don't need to pick up a textbook. And I'll show you where the te the digital text is, and it's mostly just resource material. I've got powerpoints and videos that I use for the uh, and websites that I use for the primary teaching resources. So I already went through this one, mostly video. Tutorials, uh, for the video tutorials, a lot of time I'm working inside a programming language uh, and I'm coding something. Uh, a good way to, to work the videos is uh, just watch a little bit and then go do a little bit and then go back and watch a bit more and do a little bit more. It's just so you're practicing the skills as I go through them in the video. Um, it's, it's probably a better way of doing it than trying to watch the whole video and then go back and try to remember everything that was from the video. So if you just do a little bit at a time, it, it's easy, usually easier for you. There's lots of online resources for computer science, lots of them. And I encourage you to, to search out uh, websites that, you know, help you with the subject. Uh, 
Um, I will explain it one way, and, and if, you know, if you send me an email and say it's, it's not making sense, I may try to explain it another way, or I may point you to a different resource um, that, uh, that helps you out. Uh, so we'll just do our best using all the resources that we have in order to troubleshoot any of the problems or questions that you have in the class. <clears throat> um, stackoverflow.com is what I consider the best um, computer science and co hard, you know, programmer uh, forum on the web. Uh, people ask questions all the time, experienced programmers answer questions all the time. Chances are, if there's a question that you've got about anything programming related, somebody has already asked it on overflow or stackoverflow.com and somebody else, an expert, has already answered it. So it's an excellent resource um, that, I, that I, I use all the time. Okay, um, I will. I need to say though, no copying the code that's from there. It's for expanding your learning, right? Um, we are not a copy and paste class uh, by any sense. So, so just you know, I want you to be aware of that right off the right off the bat. Independent problem solving is a key skill in computer science. Okay, we do work in groups. Um, I have worked in the industry before I was a teacher, and there is a lot of group work and a lot of team um, effort in computer science. But uh, you know. <clears throat> the vast majority of your time when you're coding and you're programming things, you have problems that you've got to solve and you've got to solve them largely by yourself. So I am always happy to help you get started. Um, but I also know from my own experience and from the experience of students uh, that I've had over the last 15 years that um, if you make an attempt to solve your problem before you come to me, you will learn it better and you will be more confident in your ability to solve problems. So um, I'm always here for help, but I would recommend that you try to solve the problem first using the web and other resources that you have. And if it's still frustrating you, then contact me and I'll, and I'll try to scaffold it so that, so that uh, we answer your questions and solve the problems. This is a very hands-on class. We're going to be using computers every day. We're going to be coding every day. Um, there isn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, there isn't a whole lot of fill, you know, fill in the blanks and write in your notebook type stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's coding. And it's, you need to solve problems and you need to build me programs that work and you need to understand why they work. And so it, there's a lot of knowledge and theory in the class, but it's, um, it's structured in a way that we learn it as we're doing it. So hopefully that works for you. I, I prefer hands-on classes, so hopefully you're in the same boat. Uh, rough idea of what we're doing for the course. We're going to we'll learn a little bit more about what hardware is, what software is, uh, brief history, brief history of uh, computer science and the history of computers and technology, um, algorithms, which are essentially just recipes for how we do things and planning out your code before actually trying to program. Um, we're going to work with, uh, I went through these already a little bit, so we're going to start with a program called Scratch, we're going to move to another program called Reborg, and then ultimately we are going to end up with Python, which is a very powerful, very simple, and uh, very, very popular programming language. Um, every, just about every post-secondary introduction to computers course is in Python. So if you're planning on doing computer science or programming uh, after high school, whether it's in you know a technical school or a university or college or something like that, you're going to see Python again, and it's probably going to be the first course you take. So if you've done well in computer science 20 and 30 in high school, you'll have a real leg up when you go to uh, when you go to university or post-secondary study. So we, we move from sort of visual drag and drop programming um, to more syntax based. And by syntax based, I mean, you're typing it out, there's specific commands, there's specific punctuation and spellings and whatnot that have to be perfect in order for your program to work. So we try to kind of ease you from a visual model where it's drag and drop and it's quite simple to a you know more hard-coded um, programming. Uh, there is an independent project in this course that's worth 15%. And I am very, very flexible in that project as long as it's related to uh, you know computers and technology in some way and, and somehow, you know, programming. Um, I, I'm very, very flexible in that. Pick something you're interested in and, uh, and run it by me and, and, then, uh, and then build your project throughout the course. Don't leave it till the last minute. Build it throughout the Quint. So here's some lessons from, uh, from Quint 1. We've got one Quint under our belt for Computer Science 20. I do. You know, I do. And uh, here's some of the things, here's some of the lessons that I've learned, and here's some of the things that students have told me and basically said, hey, pass this on to the next group. Um, this is our advice. So get ready on day one. Okay, You can't afford to wait a week before you start this. Uh, the way we've got the quint set up, a week is like a month. So you got to get going on it. And uh, if you don't, you're going to find yourself in, a, in kind of a world of hurt right away. So 
get going on day one. And if there's any problems, any concerns, email me and then we'll, we'll sort them out. But we really need to get working right away. So let's make sure we got all the programs and accounts you need. Um, we are going to be using uh, a variety of different tools, depending on what sort of computer system you have at home. If you're working on a Mac or if you're working on a Windows machine or if you're working on Linux, these can all be accommodated. But you have to know where to get the programs and make sure that you're using the right programs. Um, two to two and a half hours a day. Okay, this is something that uh, many students from the first quint had a lot of trouble with because they were used to being in a physical school. They were worse, used to moving from class to class and they were used to having a teacher kind of looking over their shoulder, making sure they were doing their work. Well, you're working at home. I can't do that. So you're going to have to uh, motivate yourself to do the work that you need to do. And you're going to have to put in the time. I have website tracking technology that allows me to see um, how often you access the website, how much time you spend on the pages. Are you accessing learning materials and whatnot? And I don't like to, you know, I don't like to be the sort of big brother and, and, and you know, track every piece of data. And, you know, I know we're human beings and people work, you know, people work all sorts of different ways and people learn all sorts of different ways. But if you're expected to put in two to two and a half hours of class a day and I look on the website and see that you've spent an hour in a week, well, you're probably 11 hours behind. It, you know, it's, it's just a reality. And in taking an online course, you accept some of the responsibility for, yeah, I've got to, I've got to independently motivate myself and I've got to be willing to put in this kind of time, just like I would in a physical school. We're putting in the exact same amount of time as you would in a physical school. Um, it's just uh, because of the quint system and because you're only taking two classes in each quint, you have to spend, you know, two to three times as long on each class every day. So let's get started uh, early on that. Um, Independent project, um, it's due at the end of the semester or end of the quint, but I recommend you start thinking about it early and start tossing some ideas around, even if you don't really know how to do it yet, if you don't know how to program it yet. Um, chances are, if you're taking this class, it's an elective and you've, uh, you've probably got some interest in technology or learning how to program. So, you know, if you're a games person and you want to, you know, you want to build a mobile game or you want to build a game in scratch or, or something like that, start thinking about it early and, uh, and let me know what you know, sort of ideas you have and, and we'll, we'll help you build a plan for that. Uh, I've got this in capital letters. Email me if you need help. I am always willing to help. I will either type you back an answer or I will send you some pictures that'll help or I'll make you a little video that'll help. And I had some students who preferred to have um, online sessions with me, uh, you, you know, small group based or one-on-one or, uh, -on -one where I'll just meet with you in this sort of virtual environment and we'll go through some uh, some of the assignments or questions or whatever is giving you difficulty, I'm always available to do that. So please, please email me. There are some synchronous uh, learning opportunities. That means, you know, all of us at the same time in the same place will be, you know, behind our computers, but we'll be in like a Zoom type meeting. And those are usually reserved for more question and answer or preparing for future concepts. Or like I've mentioned before, if there's a mistake that people are making uh, frequently, uh, a program that students are commonly having trouble with, those would be a good place for us to all get together and kind of say, okay, so what's going right, what's going wrong, and how can we, you know, how can I help you move forward? So I'll, uh, I'll stagger those opportunities, but we will have some of those. Um, read the announcements um, every day, preferably. There won't always be something new in there, but it's, it's a good way to keep track of, of sort of the day-to-day -day things that change in the course. Watch your deadlines. That's where the calendar becomes important and that to-do page becomes important. Um, you got to be handing stuff in on time so that I can give you feedback because the feedback that I give you will help you with the next project and the next project and the next project. So we want to, we want to be very consistently handing things in. I want to be assessing it and giving you some feedback so that you can do a better job on the next program. Um, try to establish a strong work routine at home. I mentioned that you should be working two to two and a half hours a day on this. If you are just, you know, naturally adept at this and you're very good at it and you can do everything in an hour a day, that's great. But uh, most students need to put in a couple hours a day in order to stay current and to really get the best, uh, the best learning experience out of the class. In order to do that, uh, most students have found that if they set a daily schedule, it's better for them. Um, you know, I'm going to work on computer science from 10 a.m. till noon every day and then do it every day and try to find yourself a nice quiet place where you're not going to have a whole bunch of distractions you know, people talking, TV on, video games, phones, etc. If you find a quiet working spot, I've got my, my little office down here. Um, it'll make things a lot easier for you. 
Um, the students that didn't do as much work maybe on a Monday, Tuesday, and then tried to catch it all up on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they said they struggled. So um, don't overestimate what you can get done in, uh, <clears throat> in one day. Uh, you're going to need to spread your time out. And you're going to need to, to have a consistent routine. Uh, this is something I hoped I wouldn't have to spend a whole lot of time on, but unfortunately there were some incidents in the first in the first semester, and that is in academic integrity, basically copying, plagiarizing, cheating. And uh, I'm a computer science teacher. I've been working with the web my entire life. I, it's pretty easy to tell uh, if you've been copying and pasting code or using other people's code. Code's like poetry. Um, you know, there's a right way to, to, to make your program work and, and to do things, but it, the way that people program is very, very independent. It's very, very unique. We may have three different programs doing the same three things that are coded completely differently. So um, I, I've been doing this long enough to know when people are cheating. So don't do it. And here's why. Um, well, A, it'll catch up with you later in the, you know, in the future. If you, you know, if you get away with cheating now, there's no reason to stop. And, and eventually you're going to get caught and you're going to get yourself into real trouble. Um, particularly after high school, if you get caught cheating in a university course, they'll either give you a zero and take your money or they'll, ex <laughs> they'll expel you and take your money. Um, it's very, very serious. If you get caught doing it in the, in the, in the real world, um, you know, even outside of university, we're talking lawsuits, we're talking, you know, losing your job, things like that. So, um, you're smart people, you have integrity, keep that integrity and you don't need to cheat. If you're struggling with something, if you're stressed out about something, if a program's just not working, I'm always here to help you. Okay. I'm always here to help you. I'm going to give you hints to try and get you going. Um, I'm not going to do the work for you, but I'm going to try to set you up for success and, you know, keep moving you forward so that eventually you get it. So there's no need to cheat in this course. Um, I, I'm here for you. We've got lots of resources. I promise you, you'll make it even if something seems insurmountable at the time. Um, don't give in. Don't give in to the, uh, the pressure or the temptation to copy somebody else's code. You just don't need to in this class. We'll, we'll, you'll be fine. Um, I'm going to send out progress reports, usually just an email and a PDF every couple of weeks, just so you know what your mark is, what you've done, what you haven't done. So just make sure you're getting my emails. Um, you know, if, uh, if you're not receiving communication from me, um, you're going to need to, to, you know, send me an email or call me or something and say, I had the wrong email address in there. Use this one instead. I'm usually very good at communication turnaround. Uh, I respond to emails kind of all over the place all day, sometimes at night, although I may not be able to at night, but you know, I will almost always get uh, back to you within a couple hours and, but 24 hours is, is the most, but usually much quicker than that. And when I'm marking things, taking things in, I'll usually have feedback and a mark to you in the next day or two days at max. Um, just like I expect you to mark, uh, to hand your things in on time. I expect myself to be able to give you feedback in a timely manner, because if I give you a feedback a week later, like I said, that's a month later, essentially in, in a quint system. So I know I need to get things back to you quickly and I will. And your feedback's mostly going to be either typed or written. And uh, if you have any questions about the feedback or you don't understand the feedback that I've given you, again, just email me and we will, we will make sure that we, uh, that we take care of it. So I've already taken enough of your time for an intro video. Again, you can expect some emails uh, from me and, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you just let me know. And I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. And, uh, you know, stay stay safe and uh, stay safe, stay happy. And, and we're going to have a good quint together. Take care.